Hey guys, T Blair. Today we got a look at Tashkent for you. Tier 7 Russian Soviet destroyer. There's troops on the screen. We got Vian. We got Sims. Full survivability. Sims increases HP. Vian increases the incoming dispersion, making it harder to hit. Here we got a game, Sea of Fortune. Two destroyers per side. Benham on the east. Tashkent on the west. We got a Jervis and Fletcher on the opposing side. Not to pick on this Benham, but he's going to have a different approach to this match. And I just want you to keep an eye on his position. He's going to be full on. I'm going to spend the entire game behind enemy lines launching torps at him. And just compare the scores between that approach and the approach that we're going to be taking. Which is playing the destroyer role as intended. Contesting bases. Capturing bases, hopefully. Dealing with enemy destroyers. Now, if you noted the build, we got no concealment on this thing. We got bad concealment to begin with, with these Russian destroyers, and we're embracing the stink. Okay, we're just saying, since we're going to be outspotted by every destroyer, even if we do double concealment, even if we put Bay on there, even if we put Swirsky on there as inspirations, still going to be outspotted anyways. Now, we could get a little bit more breathing room, yes, and that could be valuable. I'm sure that's approach an approach a lot of people who play these ships take, but in my case i'm just saying okay well we already got really bad detection let's just go with it we'll enhance the survivability and go that route so when we are operating in this environment you got to keep that in mind okay if you're getting let's say we're pushing forward here we get spotted uh and we can operate under the assumption the enemy destroyers might have a kilometer kilometer and a half of buffer between when we can get to them and spot them well then we got to read the situation do they have Support ships close. If yes, then we got to turn off immediately. We can't continue to push in them. If they're kind of isolated, then we can kind of guess. So we do have twist and track with this build. Kind of keep an eye on them. And this is the call we're making here. We got some ships back there. Cleveland, you know, dangerous, but going to be kind of floaty at that range. Iowa might get a shot off at us here. Maybe not. We're relying on some of that incoming dispersion. Could have easily dodged between the first and second torp there. Misjudged it. Ate a torp. Big time, that hurt. So now we got some shots coming in. We're trying to slam on the brakes, let the smoke go here. We're trying to get these torps off to at least trade with this Fletcher. Because at this point in time, we got to realize, okay, we've made a mistake here. We've traded 18,000 HP for 2,000, which is an inefficient trade. It's a good way to be removing yourself from the game early. So at this point in time, we got to readjust the strategy. We also had that other destroyer briefly spotted directly to the north. I don't know if you noticed that one. But we got both destroyers operating over here. Now what we're doing here, we're kind of looking for these explosions. And uh, whenever we get an explosion there, we can see, okay, that's where the ship is. And we can continue to try and fire them. So we got a few more extra thousand damage on them. It's still trade favoring the red team between these two destroyers. But we got a little bit of that HP back. And we got them off the bases, attempting to capture the base. We can play in the smoke right now because the... People on our team, the uh, battleships or cruisers, whatever, they're biased. They're pushing forward. Uh, so that allows us to utilize the smoke. A mistake a lot of destroyer players will make is they'll pop the smoke. They're saying to themselves, okay, I'm going to try and use the smoke and gun something down. But then there's no spotting out there, and then they kind of get mad. Let's say I got a Fiji sitting in a cloud next to me, and I'm in my cloud, and neither of us are spotting. Well, as the destroyer, I have to leave and go spot. That's my responsibility. Uh, the Fiji's gun's much better. Usually any other ship that is going to have priority over the destroyer in terms of effectiveness. But look at these shots that we are getting on the Jervis. Now the things you got to understand about the Russian destroyers, both playing with them and against them, very flat, low-flying arcing shells, very easy to hit. High velocity, and they hit pretty hard too. So like a Fletcher, very, very dangerous for instance, but those shells a little bit more floaty. And a little bit harder to hit. So especially at range, you start to get more of an advantage over these ships. So that's another reason, you know, once we can get them to shoot their guns, then that'll keep them spotted. Then if we can keep them at range, the advantage lies with us. So we help take out the first destroyer, help take out the second one. And we still managed to stay alive here. So despite a fairly disastrous start, uh, we did manage to claw it back. So they've lost both destroyers. We got both of ours. Keep in mind... Once again, look at the map here. You can see what he's up to. Uh, and I just want to passively let you figure out how effective that type of play is. Very, very common. Any destroyer who thinks they got a good 
torpedo boat. This is usually what they do. They sneak all the way around the back side of the map and then they miss torp after torp for the remainder of the game. Anyway, we got our base here. We, of course, both teams started with the home central base, red in the north, blue in the south. We've captured our western base and nobody on the east. I mean, we should have that Benham in there uh, taking that cap for an easy cap, but nobody in the east has managed to do that. And then in this instance, whenever you get this mismatch where you're projected to have a cap advantage for multiple minutes, perhaps throughout the rest of the match, then it's on the red team, in this case, to be more aggressive. We don't need to be doing anything too wild here, especially as a low-health Tashkent, who's very easily detectable. Uh, so we're just kind of letting the play develop here. Iowa does go down. Do have the Cleveland all the way north, but he's not in a position to attack the bases, and we certainly can't do anything to him. We can't, for instance, sail up to him and try and gun him down the open water. He would win that fight easily. So we're looking for other opportunities here. Sharon Horse moving through the middle of the map. Now, being in this gap here, a little risky because there's a lot of ships on their team that haven't been spotted for a while. What we don't want is for them to all of a sudden pop up on our doorstep here. But getting some shops on here, got a fire going. Um, a little bit of damage. Trying to pull forward here because you can see we got this little... Uh, thing on the left that'll stick out and block us so even if we get a little bit closer last torp right there a little bit lazy we could have actually aimed that one on the indicator we were kind of hoping this guy was going to slow down and how we're going to increase those odds of that happening well we're going to back up just a little bit here make sure we can still use that cover on the left but we're going to shoot him here uh very carefully we got to keep a close eye on his turrets we're noticing his secondaries aren't reaching us sometimes people have a ridiculous secondary build on the sharn horse but uh, you got to be aware that it's possible. But by shooting at this guy here and making sure he's not shooting back, he might be saying to himself, okay, what's shooting this? Oh, it's a destroyer. I'm going to slam on the brakes, try and get those guns on him, shoot him while he's visible. And I think he may be slowing down a little bit here, maybe not, but we are going to manage to get him with the one torp. We had him with the fire previously, and the AP will uh, combine there to finish him off with the flood damage. So kind of a risky play on paper, but we were very careful making sure we kept an eye on the torpedo or the turrets and making sure we were not getting targeted by the secondaries and we had the cover to quickly disengage if need to be um, if that need arose so got him out backed up drop spot disengage now we got the Alabama here moving into the sea once again we're maintaining the cap advantage they've cleared the Cleveland off either he's moved to the east or he's dead I don't know which but we still maintain the two caps, and I'm looking at their home cap, that north red cap. If we can go ahead and get that, of course, the game will be wrapped up. Now, the game's already looking pretty good. We got a 3-4 ship lead there. So we're not in any major danger, but uh, we're trying to get a little bit of reset here, making sure that the score continues to get out of control for him. And had the uh, Benham on our team gotten this cap earlier, I think we'd probably be about to win out on score here already. So you can see... Once again, yet another example of the team that controls the caps is the one that usually is going to be getting the Ws on uh, domination mode. Even if for some reason they're still going for, you know, a team wipe, kill everyone on the team win condition. A lot easier to do when you control the bases because then the other team is forced to react, okay? And then you can play more defensively, uh, try and focus their ships one by one as opposed to you being forced to make the crazy plays uh, just to prevent the game from uh, letting the score run out and end that way so always going to be in your advantage to have those capped under your control and especially if you can do it early especially if you can get you know a two to one cap advantage that runs for the majority of the game that's how you get these runaway scores like this so utilizing the smoke here Algeri goes down there and now we're looking at, okay, we got two ships left, two ships spotted. They're both all the way north. Uh, we're going to go out of here, see our detection. And you can see on the map, once we exit the smoke, how much room we got to play with here. Might as well go ahead and get on B. We'll get uh, increased score for ourselves if we can get another cap. And, of course, that'll help run the game out a little bit quicker because they'll stop accumulate points and we'll get more points coming our way. So that's kind of... You know, a typical destroyer game. Usually, if you watch me play destroyer on domination mode, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to kill the destroyers, trying to capture the bases, trying to do some spotting. And if we happen to get a little bit of torp action in while we're doing all those things, cool. That's a little bit of a bonus. But the approach to how you do it differs. Okay, if we got a very stealthy uh, Japanese torpedo boat, might not want to be picking 
long term open water engagements against the enemy destroyers maybe take one or two quick hits then disengage with the smoke likewise this thing we got to be very careful very cognizant of the support ships i think that's probably the hardest thing to do as a russian destroyer and it takes a little bit of practice and a little bit of focus you got to say to yourself okay i can usually win this 1v1 fight with the other destroyer but I also got to make sure I'm closer to my support ships than that guy is to his. Because if they start piling on you, uh, even if you got a really nice survivability build like we do, that's how they can turn the tide and win those engagements. So, Leon's sailing away here. We're just trying to go for a little bit of bonus damage here as we get that final cap. But you're going to see here 60,000 damage or whatever it is. Not a huge damage game. But we got two caps, three kills. Most of the damage was against destroyers. It's going to be... Uh, quite a bit, you know, we're the top score on the team, obviously, and compared to the Benham, which was, he didn't ever wind up getting a base or anything, I think he gets about 600 points, and he maybe got a couple torp hits or whatever he did, but these type of games that the Tashcan's playing here, these are the ones where, if those are the destroyers on your team playing the bases, killing the destroyers, that's usually how you're going to win these games. If everyone on your team and destroyers is sailing around open water, trying to torp everything, uh, it's basically not doing anything of value, and that's usually how you're getting these losses attributable to Destroyer play. So anyway, that's a look at the Tashkent for you guys. Hopefully you did enjoy it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. New to the channel, consider subscribing. Lots of World of Warships coming all the time. Questions, comments, leave them below. Love to hear from you, and I'll see you all later. Peace!